Hi everyone, my name is Shelby. Thank you for being here tonight. Before I start my speech, I'd like for everyone to take a moment and imagine themselves or someone you love as a child experiencing brutal treatment. Being punished in ways no child should ever endure, being kicked, smacked, or even punched at such a young age, sorry, at such a young innocent age, feeling so hurt mentally, physically, and emotionally that seeing light at the end of the tunnel starts to become a fantasy. For the last few weeks and several hours, I have been putting all of my attention into finding all kinds of information surrounding child maltreatment, whether that be physical, mental, or sexual abuse. Child maltreatment is a pressing public health problem. Many people in the US, including myself, have either witnessed child maltreatment or have been a victim. According to the survey I have asked you all to complete, 90% of you have heard or witnessed child maltreatment, and according to an article written by Kim Heinel called To Prevent Child Maltreatment, in 2017, 3.5 million U.S. children were reported to CPS, which is Child Protective Services, for maltreatment concerns. Many parents, including some of you who have children, are probably thinking, I would never allow that to happen to my child. You're probably right. However, that doesn't stop someone else who may be around your child or children from causing them harm. We can protect our children every day the best way we know how, but the reality is not everyone in the world thinks the way that you do. Although, in you, although you and many others may think abuse tends to happen in the home where the child resides, but abuse can happen anywhere with anyone and more frequently than we assume. According to the survey I gave to you all, 40% of you were able to answer correctly of how many children are, re are reported abuse each year in the U.S., which is 2.9 million. With all that being said, today I would like to bring to your attention the many different types of child maltreatment, the statistics of which children such as their sex or age fall victim to this abuse or fatalities among children, the effects the effects that victims of child maltreatment endured both in their adolescence and adulthood, and what we can do as a society to prevent child maltreatment from continuing. Abuse does not always mean physical. It can happen in many different forms, such as physical, psychological, or sexual abuse. Physical abuse is when a parent or caregiver causes a non-accidental physical injury to a child. Sexual abuse occurs when an adult uses a child for sexual purposes or involves a child in sexual acts. Lastly, psychological abuse is when a parent or caregiver harms a child's mental and social development or causes severe emotional harm. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, of the children who died from abuse, 41.6% of children were physically abused, 2.2% of children were psychologically abused, and 0.6% of children were mentally abused in 2017. Now that you know the different types of maltreatment, I'd like to get into the statistical information of which children, boy or girl, <coughs> and what ages abuse occurs. Child maltreatment, is, child maltreatment is not only subjected to specific children and can happen to any child at any age. According to Kim Heinel in her article published in May of 2019, a recent study that used between 2003 and 2014 nationwide CPS records estimated that 37.4% of U.S. children would experience at least one mal maltreatment investigation. Although abuse can happen at any age in childhood, younger children are the most vulnerable to maltreatment. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, nationally states report that more than one quarter, about 28.5% of victims, are younger than three years old. Also stated in this article, the, percentage, the percentages of child victims are similar, similar for both boys, which is 48.6%, and girls, which is 51%. However, the 2017 victimization rate for girls is 9.6 per 1,000 girls in the population, which is higher than boys with a rate of 8.6 per, per 1,000 boys. Unfortunately, fatalities are also a threat to young children who experience abuse. In 2017, a national estimate of 1,720 children died from abuse and neglect. Much like the abuse rate for children younger than three years old applies to the, to the fatality rate as well. 78.1% of child fatalities are younger than one years old and died at a rate of 21.91 per 100,000 children. 
These rates tend to decrease with age. Rates of abuse for girls tend to be slightly higher than boys. However, the rate of fatality within boys is higher than girls. The rate of fatality due to child maltreatment is 2.68 per, per 100,000 boys and 2.02 .02 per 100,000 girls. Now that I've discussed all the statistical rates of abuse among children of ages and sex, I would like to discuss what the effects of maltreatment has on adolescents and adults as they get older. Childhood is likely the time where the foundation is laid for an individual's ability to make decisions, react to situations, and interact with others. The effects of abuse are undoubtedly traumatizing for any child, but not only does it cause fear, anger, or sadness, but can also affect many things as these children grow. According to Kim Heinel's article, the scientific literature has documented a wide range of adverse consequences stemming from maltreatment. Adverse health outcomes are just one that include a typical early brain development, chronic and debilitating diseases like liver disease, chronic bronchitis, cancer, and diabetes. There are also various cognitive and psychological and behavioral con consequences, sorry, consequences, such as low IQ score, poor academic achievement, and many internalizing and externalizing problems. Maltreated, maltreated children tend to experience increased mortality through childhood, extending into adulthood. According to an article written by John Hoagland called To Prevent and Protect the Reporting of Child Abuse by Educators, states that mental health problems can arise from child abuse such as depression, eating disorders, sleep disruption, and sexual problems. These consequences can follow them into adulthood, resulting in alcohol and drug-related problems, and sometimes being trapped in a vicious cycle, being prone to becoming abusers themselves. Victims of child abuse must learn to cope with the effects of abuse for the rest of their lives, as they are unlikely to go away. With all of this information I have gone over today, how can we as a society prevent maltreatment from continuously occurring? Being a victim of child abuse myself, I have thought about what can be changed to prevent abuse from occurring. We have CPS to call in situations of child abuse, but how many cases actually get resolved before a fatality happens? From my own experience, I have witnessed CPS themselves to shove off a case of abuse because the parents or caregivers were so convincing that everything was fine in the home. They come out when a report is called and immediately close the case if no harm is seen. In my opinion, cases of child abuse should be stricter and continue for, more, continue for more than a half hour visit to a home where a report was made. According to Kim Heinel's article of Public Health Prevention, public health prevention efforts offer promise in reducing maltreatment. Home visiting has been a popular prevention model by providing regular home visits by nurses, social workers, or paraprofessionals from birth to kindergarten. The project has identified 20 evidence-based home visiting programs. Among them, eight programs have demonstrated at least one favorable effect on the maltreatment of more relevant outcomes. This specific program should be used on all cases of reported abuse to absolutely confirm or deny any abuse allegations. The article also examines the prevention effect of its home visiting program, not only on the onset of maltreatment reporting, but also on the reoccurrences from second through fifth reports. Another way to possibly pre prevent abuse from occurring is you and everyone else to report any suspicious abuse you may have. People who report abuse help to eliminate the negative consequences and help prevent the continuing cycle of abuse. Not only can strangers or neighbors report, but schools and other social institutions, including healthcare providers, should report any abuse. According to John Holdland's article, outside of a child's family, schools are considered the most important influence on an individual's adolescence. This reinforces the necessity that educators be taught to recognize and report child abuse. All the information I was able to gather truly was an eye-opener for me. That child maltreatment is such a common and nationwide problem among our children. The abuse that children endure at such a young age and at such high rates should be more of a cause for concern in our society to want to change our efforts to prevent it. Not only is it scary and sad for these children, but as they get older, the effects it has on them can alter who they are and decrease their chances of becoming the best version of themselves. It's just not right. We need to make changes to protect our children from maltreatment. Thank you.